Ghost of Tsushima is the based on a true story Assassin's Creed in Japan we never got. I can tell you right away that you can compare this to the best open world games, which are 3, Shadows of Mordor, Horizon Zero Dawn, Breath of the Wild. Take your pick. The entire game takes place on one island in Japan during the Yuan invasion and the 1200s. While it does have some glaring historical inaccuracies, such as the use of a typical Uchigatana in Jin's Daisho instead of Itachi, which horse riding samurai of the time definitely would have used, this is because it also takes an extremely good mood observation of samurai film and is heavily inspired by folktales. The Aijutsu martial art that is seen in the game is essentially unseen in history up until 200 years after the Mongol invasion of Japan. Most samurai media made today is based on today's practicing martial artists, and this is no exception. This is just one concession that was made for artistic liberty, considering the names of samurai and their clans, as well as the details of events, have all been altered in some way. It also erases the Chinese and Korean involvement in the invasion, and leaves it just up to the Mongol forces, but I feel like this is likely for simplicity's sake. Right away, you're given the option to choose between full English with subs, Japanese with subs, or English without subs. Knowing that the subtitles and lip syncing are entirely for the English version of the game, this somewhat bogs down my experience. The voice acting, however, brings this back up as it is extremely full of emotion and conveys every story point with feeling. While Ghost of Tsushima is an open world sandbox game, a genre that I have absolutely no love for, I have to talk about how this handles the genre with a certain amount of grace, both inside and outside the overworld. It maintains a stunning and pointed cinema-like experience during cutscenes with well-shot camera angles. It will almost certainly stand as the defining game of the PS4 generation for graphical fidelity and what was possible on the technology. Walking through the forests of Tsushima as light spills through the trees, nothing but the peace around you, coming to the edge of the forest in complete silence, reflecting on an abstract concept and writing a haiku, which becomes the permanent description of an unlocked cosmetic item. This, in and of itself, is a combination of mood and interactivity that achieves something that open world games typically never even get close to. Ghost of Tsushima gets so very near escaping the huge weakness of sandbox games, checklist syndrome. With immersion-centric features that sidestep this convention as long as it can throughout your experience. You can follow foxes to a shrine of Inari. There's bamboo cutting. Your flute changes the weather seamlessly and without fanfare. Anytime you are lost or don't know where to go, you can simply see which way the breeze is flowing and go that way. This is genius. It's way more immersive than I thought it would be when I first heard about it. It's subtle, and in certain armor, the protagonist's cape will function as a compass completely by coincidence. These are small details that add up over time to something I can only qualify as true immersion but this is easily broken. The birds that lead you to stuff are a cool idea, but they will fly straight into obstacles and have a real hard time leading you anywhere specific. Once you know the ins and outs of how every mechanic functions is similar to how every other open world mechanics have in the past, the magic is lost and it remains a far cry from just letting you experience everything on your own. The unfortunate, most efficient way to play any open world game is not getting lost in the experience, but to open up the map and get and find all of the things. If you've ever played the first Assassin's Creed and remember getting hundreds of flags, or playing the second one and getting a hundred feathers, this retains that functionality and doesn't ascend past it. It has over 20 sword skins, 50 artifacts to find, 80 samurai flags to collect, and many, many more filler items to get. This does, however, translate into a good variety of cosmetics, and I found myself sporting several looks throughout the game. I have to give it credit there, even if it does take away from the slightly iconic look that the ghost has by the late game. If you just stop sprinting everywhere and gently walk from location to location and amble around, this goes from being just another empty open world game to something truly special. You can enjoy the vibe this game gives off when you play it casually. It excels when you do so. 
but I wish that the wind functioned as how the birds are supposed to, with the wind twisting and turning wherever the closest thing to see is. And while I'm at it, I wish Ghost of Tsushima got rid of the map. Learn the island yourself. It's really not even that big. Jin lived here his whole life. He would know it. You should know it and be given the opportunity to assimilate this knowledge naturally. You should have an aha moment when a character refers to a place. How to find them and continue the story and how to get there should also be part of the immersion. And while each tale or side quest feels like enough of its own self-contained episode that you can pick up at any time and in any order, there's also a notable lack of cutscenes and character sequences in side quests, which would drastically improve the feel of them. This is speaking in general. The rule is to play the companion side quests and ignore the other filler ones. The open world genre still holds the story and overall sense of drama back quite a bit. While you're in the quests, the pacing is extremely good and the characters are written very strongly. But I have to say that every time I'm doing something that isn't the main story or those companion side quests, my sense of urgency is asking me why I'm doing it. Why am I wandering around, checking my map for the closest thing to do, checklisting what would otherwise be an immensely immersive experience? I feel as if the devs were more concerned with the AAA idea of content than with the idea of polish, of immersion. Even though they're so drastically close to tipping the scale into that perfection, they are standing on the edge, mind you, but they never take the leap. Jin Sakai is a character with compelling inner conflicts. His story starts with a strong chaos that is reflected in his powerful theme song. His relationship with his family is well thought out and developed. It's always on his thoughts, and it's always a driving theme of the story. He has to wrestle with these two different ideologies he has within himself as he justifies going against the samurai code to protect those who cannot protect themselves because that is his code of honor. My opinion of this game's mechanical progression is unfortunately and rather oddly really heavily tied to spoilers. Basically I will say this, if you want to play only a stealth game, you will be held back. There is a clear comparison at the start of the game between the Jito Dai and the Khan in that the Jito is completely upfront and honest about everything he does and is willing to die for his ideals. Jin ends up being a weird amalgamation of both, using intimidation tactics, fighting for what's right, using stealth. He terrifies people on the battlefield. He sneaks around, uses underhanded tactics, and has a complete lack of mercy for his enemy. This falls flat because while there is a clear line between Jin Sakai the samurai and the ghost of Tsushima in mechanics in the gameplay, there is essentially barely any reason to actually use stealth mechanics up until this point, when the game rewards you more for not doing that at all until it is forced in the story. In fact, I feel like the times the game lets you play around with stealth is where the game is least confident and has the least amount of freedom. The entire time I was playing this, I was really dying for stealth playgrounds that were extremely specific, maybe urban and challenging, but they never came. Instead, you have a bunch of fights where you had to use every single tool at your disposal to win. I can only count two instances of gameplay where I was excited at how the mechanics were being utilized. Sneaking into a castle to deliver a message to Jin's uncle where it would have meant death to be seen and be immoral and against Jin's code of honor to defend himself. In the final battle where you are thematically overwhelmed and given no choice but to use every tool at your disposal, you feel as if you have become the ghost, this merciless warrior with no limits who can outmaneuver and outclass anyone if given the right tools. This is no longer a duel to the death, it is a cage fight and you are a tiger brandishing a sword and mouth against an unsuspecting challenger. This is your battleground where you thrive. 
Jin's self-conflict, while extremely important to his character and the story, mechanically is difficult to pull off consistently. Because of the game's narrative, Jin becoming the ghost over time, the game severely gimps certain mechanics in usability. Even looking at the skill tree, the ghost section has certain things that are unlockable, but little that is immediately useful as a stealth mechanic. Even your ranged attacks, throwables, and quick fire items that are unlocked are more useful as fight helpers and don't really function to assist in stealth and remaining hidden. As already mentioned, there is a very clear line between both from a design standpoint, and yet at every opportunity the game will stop you from being able to sneak too well without an extremely focused late game build. This is a problem because if you saw marketing materials at all, or if you just read the box, there is a very clear implication that player choice is there from the start. Even in the beginning of the game, when you're given stealth mechanics to play around with, they just kind of feel horribly placed. You end up feeling like you should just start a fight immediately. This is where the standoff mechanic being a huge button at the bottom of the screen for the entirety of sneaking around just becomes the devs going, are you sure you want to play a stealth game? You could be fighting honorably right now. And it feels like this massive finger wag. How dare you be sneaky? We built in this movie inspired mechanic. Use it. So if you take the multi-assassinate option as the very first thing and all the hearing upgrades right after that, you're going to be missing those skill points very early on because you'll have no way to use them effectively. What you absolutely should do for the sake of retaining the game's balance is upgrading your parry and evasion first. I can't stress enough that this shouldn't have been left up to the player if you were going to force this gameplay style. Because leaving it up to the player has now had the side effect of potentially ruining the progression, as the game is designed in a very extremely limited window to be very exactly one thing. A samurai that plays dirty. Some things are locked behind story events, but not enough for the balance the devs are trying to achieve, considering that there is one build, not two, and forcing one or the other is not working here. The player doesn't have a choice. They just don't know that the first time they see the skill screen. You can break this down further by looking at armor stat allocations, which are muddled with loose, unclear language and percentages. What the fuck are these? The Mongol armor gives you shitloads of armor and health, and is the stealthiest set? This armor gives some stealth bonuses, but also melee damage, which is irrelevant when you're sneaking around. The ghost armor makes your insta-kills inside combat build faster, but also gives a huge stealth bonus. It also makes it so you just don't have to fight people at all via a terror mechanic that randomly has enemies flee from battle, which is unreliable and makes me wonder why the stealth mechanic isn't just built stronger. In the end, because of how it's handled, most armor sets are homogenized. You just pick one that looks nice to you and it all sort of remains balanced by itself. There are some exceptions, but when you add in charms, what's the point? I feel the devs were not confident about game balance at all. Because after you get Ghost Stance and the Ghost Armor, you just kind of become God. Every difficult encounter gets a cheat button. If this was more about the invention of the ninja, or the invention of a shadow warrior, or something like that, I feel like it would be stronger, narratively. Instead of having Jean be this one particular person who's been the only samurai who's ever been sneaky, this isn't historically accurate for one. Shinobi did exist at the time. It's jarring for character moments in the story to not be reasonably justified because this had to be the tale. A samurai who betrayed his code. Someone who has to be brought to justice for not being honorable enough. It's very typical samurai film. And the samurai film in this refuses to accept that there might have been a ninja out there somewhere. Like no one ever even says the word shinobi. It feels like you're avoiding it just to avoid it. And people who play stealth games are gonna know that. People who know the culture, laws, and customs of the era are also gonna know that. Samurai would not react how they did in this story. Ghost of Tsushima is a game that pulls off so much of what it does with an exceptional amount of effort. But in the design and story beats, they fall short somewhat. While exceptionally moving, and I did cry at the end of this game because my belief was adequately suspended at the time, it doesn't hold up to severe scrutiny. You could argue that it shouldn't have to, 
given what concessions it does make, I guess. But while I love games that are willing to step outside the realm of comfortable for their concepts and their stories, Ghost of Tsushima does it in ways that land well, but are kind of half-assed. Is this game good? Hell yes, absolutely. Go play it right now. Is it perfect? No. And I can't wait to see what sort of games will improve on what Ghost of Tsushima has done.